Good afternoon, Alex Horst speaking. It is January 16th, and this is a meeting of the Conservation Commission's Subcommittee on Land Use Policy. And present, we have Michelle Lobb, Bruce Stedman, uh, who are commissioners, and we have Eric Jacques, who's a, a wetland administrator, and myself. So we're going to talk first about what we're going to cover today. And so open it up, Erin. Um, so I think Bruce um, didn't get a chance to have the agriculture section reviewed, and he um, was able to get some documents from MACC um, regarding some climate change adaptation type um, documents. And so since Michelle had taken on um, the climate change section, um, or, you know, applicable sections. Uh, Bruce just wanted to touch base briefly on that instead of talking about the agricult uh, agriculture section, since uh -huh. that's not quite done. So I can just offer that um, we have a draft email to go out to the agriculture people. Uh, I have a set of names that we talked about before. If you have any other names, let me know. Uh, once Aaron and Dave get back to me about the final version uh, it was my fault. I, I wrote two different things, but um, hopefully today, tomorrow, I can send something out to the people on our list. And within by the time of this next meeting of this group, we'll have some feedback about um, the agriculture section. Uh, the climate part. So, Michelle, I went ahead and just because I'm interested, I went to MACC and I said, well, are there examples that from other towns that have worked on this level of trying to really insert the ideas and the and the approaches into the various the work that they do? And and they actually it seems like oh, what's her name? I'm sorry, I can't remember, but she sent me like five or six or eight documents, about half of which are pretty directly related. Um, so I wanted to quickly review them and then send them out uh, to you through Aaron um, as examples of things we could consider. But I didn't want to start doing stuff you've because you've already gone all the way to the end and it's just would cause more trouble. So um, I don't think I'm invested to the extent that I mean, I think that would be very helpful. So I'd love to see what they sent you. So what they sent you isn't something on their website. It's like, um, I don't think so. No, one of them is a, all the stuff, the slide deck from a presentation of the 2021 or 22 conference by the Arlington mm -hmm. staff of the things that they had done there, which was extensive. Um, there's a couple of other documents from other towns in Eastern Massachusetts that have really been thinking about this and really turning it around and there may be piece there will be pieces of it that are applicable to what some of the things she sent aren't really that applicable but i want to send you the stuff that's actually useful great i'd love to see it Try to finish it by wednesday thursday and send them along okay um if you want to just send the dump to me that's great too or via aaron Whatever. Well, if you'd rather, I can do that too. I just didn't want to waste your time with stuff that, but I, I can send them along and then review them in parallel. And then if we could talk about it at the next meeting or. Okay. Just quickly, I, is it a lot of stuff then? Uh, yeah, there's eight documents. There's eight PDFs of varying okay. length. All right. Sure. Give it a, give it a you pass. Can graze, probably pretty knowledgeably graze through it and say, oh, well, this, this one is useful. This one is not. But, so yeah, I'll, I'll forward them. All right, thanks, uh, Bruce. Bruce. Bruce, to speed things along, um, maybe it would be helpful as you go through the documents to save Michelle time, if you could uh, edit in PDF, uh, maybe highlighting uh -huh. the areas that you think um, she should yeah, look at. I can do that. And that way she doesn't have to look at things that you don't think are, are applicable. Fair enough. There is a, uh, I was stumbling around and bumped into, uh, I was looking for sustainable forestry type stuff. And uh, folks, uh, I think it's Harvard. I'm going to get this wrong. I'd have to look it up on my my bookmarks. But they, they got a grant to study 
sustainability and they put together a lot of material. Uh, it's not agriculture, but uh, um, for all I know, there's something in there that might be useful to you. Um, I can I can go back in my bookmarks and figure out the links. Um, I was actually looking for something else. I bumped into it, so I saved the the bookmarks and moved on. Um, so I just offer that. Hi, Dave. So, is that the end of our discussion about um, about that? Well, there was a longer deliverables list. Yeah, I, I, I've, changed, <laughs> I've changed computers and I don't have that in front of me. See if I can find it. I'm pulling it up too, and I apologize. I'm a little bit discombobulated this morning as well because I've got. Um, I'm not actually rooted can, into my machine. I can just read it quickly if you'd like. Here, I can. I'll just. I'm just in the process of sharing my screen. So. Okay. So, this is the well, chart. Um. Yeah. So there's like a summary, and then the deliverables are down here at the bottom. Yeah, <clears throat> I I was I was talking about to talk about today. Oh, oh, our um, agenda. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. But Sorry. I can we can we can look at the deliverables. Okay, so I think the I think the first item on the agenda was to talk about the deliverables, but I can I'll pull up the agenda too, so we can have a look at that. Okay. Good. Okay, so we did three. We, we want to save time for site visits. Uh, we've gone through an exercise there. I don't think we know where we're going. So maybe we could just cover that quickly and then come back to deliverables and um, rules and regulations section. Uh, I think Bruce was going to go back through rules and regulations section since he did that originally. I did, and I sent it to Aaron to send to you. Maybe it's in there and I didn't see it, uh, but I I haven't seen it. Yeah, let me check. It's, it's not um, there. I'm not sure. I was out sick on Friday, so I'm not. No, I sent it this morning. Oh, OK. <laughs> let me just check. I can okay. forward it or open it up. I also said I'd look into beavers, which is not exactly on the agenda, but it doesn't take long to cover it. And I need to figure out where to go from where I am now. Okay, so we want to do rules and regulations first, or is that kind of the next item we want to talk about? Sure, okay. that's fine. Okay. So um, the, ver the version that Aaron's going to show you is as I understand it, I went back and checked and tried to use Alex's uh, header uh, description of where we, how we got here. Um, and so I think we need to just quickly go through the various issues that are still sitting there and see, is there more to do? Is there something we can just decide right now? Um, I'd like to try to get through the whole thing and at least have a an agreement on what the answer is or what do I do next to, to get an answer by the next time? Um, before we begin, could somebody remind me why um, why this section is here? And I ask because every time I work on this document, I ask myself, what is the intent of the document? And where is it going to be posted? And who's, who's the audience and all that? And um, so if you could just address why this section is here in this document, some of which I think is uh, dupl duplicative. I'd appreciate it. You mean why there's a rules and regulations section? 
Or... Well, isn't it more of a, uh, um, yeah. Well, so we, we um, have historically posted the rules and regulations for conservation land on the town website and also on, um, on kiosks um, at various town properties. And um, because I guess um, previous to my arrival, there had been multiple versions of rules and regulations, each one slightly different. And we're in the process of cleaning up our website. There's a lot of old pages that need updating. And Alex, you came across this when you were doing your beaver research. Um, there's a lot of sort of um, uh, defunct pages that either need to be removed or fully updated. And so in kind of looking at it initially, when I first started, I was realizing there's like one set of rules and regulations over here that say one thing and another set over here that say another. And it's, it's kind of um, to have a consensus on what the rules and regs are so that we can clean up all those pages and also um, populate our kiosks with accurate information. So would this page, this section function as a tear sheet that could be posted on kiosks absent the rest of the document? The rules and regs, yes, that's kind yeah. of the intention. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I would add to, so Aaron had a great explanation. I would also add that it's for staff and the Amherst Police Department to refer to when there are conflicts such as consumption of alcohol, open fires, and the list goes on. Um, people often say, where does it say? Where does it say you can't do this? Mm -hmm. And so police or, or conservation staff can then say, oh, here's the official document from the Conservation Commission that says we encourage the following things. We don't allow X, Y, and Z. Even though some of it is, is, an, is addressed elsewhere in the document, this provides uh, an executive summary is that it yeah um i think this is more yeah this is kind of a a, a a very yeah quick summary of 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 some of that key document factors. yeah key key factors that are pulled out and can be easily read easily digested you know in in just a couple of minutes boom you're at the end I of this it. document and yep from what I understood from Bruce's work as well, you know, I think Alex, this is kind of, it started out almost as what you described as like a stream of consciousness. It was sort of just a bunch of rules that had kind of been thrown into the document in no particular order. And I think okay. Bruce yep. or tried to organize it a little bit into sections that made sense. I got it. So when I look at this document that we're talking about right now, I'll, I'll think about it as a standalone document that uh, others in town could use or could go on kiosks um, um, rather than posting the whole document. Thank you. Mm. The same the same, for example, goes for community gardens. Those rules are in this document, but those rules also are posted on the town under community gardens. They're also supposed to be posted on kiosks around the community garden. So it's a another tear sheet kind of a summary document. Thank you. Yeah. Just a quick share. I was up at Mount Pollux the other day and I noticed, speaking of inconsistencies, there's a sign up there that says, Mount Pollux closed uh, dusk to dawn. And I went, oh my goodness, why is that sign there? That's, that's just inconsistent. It should be, oh, you know, the positive open dawn to dusk. So I asked Brad to, to change that but somebody some years ago thought oh that we should we should really say when it's closed not when it's open so but i had never seen a, a sign that said closed during the nighttime hours so anyway interesting okay sorry i'm gonna sorry move on here so yeah uh, comment uh bruce Edmund one not sure what michelle meant by this abbreviation i assume michelle that this was a previous you know some time ago you asked the question but what is it? Seed land use app. What does that mean? The land use application. 
So um, I'm not sure if it's happened, Erin, but we talked about just adding more information on the land use application about what the commission expects to see for research and education um, applications, just, you know, so that we don't have to ask somebody to come back with like their methods and their objectives and everything just to add, add it to that. Um, so that's so one. I could, I could put a link there to the application and meanwhile, Others will work on the application to get it finalized. Great. The and next one. Huh? Sorry, go uh, ahead. It was methods and abstracts, right, Michelle, that we were going to add to attach for the land use yeah. application? OK. Yeah, we had that conversation. And I don't think I followed up with IT on that, but I can do that. Sorry, I just made a note to myself. OK, the so next one, a... Alex. Sorry. There would so when you say scene land, land use application, that would be in an appendix. I was assuming that it would be an appendix, yes. I, I think it's mentioned elsewhere as an appendix. Okay. So in the table of contents, it should be listed as an appendix. Okay. I don't know if it is. I'll I'll check that part. Yeah. The next one is fishing and hunting. If this is sufficiently complicated, we can hold it to the end and see whether we get to it. It's Alex's hold. hold. Okay. Um, horses and That's mountain awesome. bikes. It says there is there signage permitting horse bike horses and bikes on designated trails would be good to have a map. And then we must designate these trails prior to mapping and hanging. So the question is, where are we on designation? That's a great question. Historically, we have posted, um, we have posted particularly for mountain bikes. I don't recall on horses, but historically we've posted trails and conservation areas that allow hunting above and also mountain bikes and um horses it's it's a task it is it's work <laughs> they get torn down the weather etc so but, but let me ask a question could are you in a place now where you could give us a list of all the trails and the designations for what's allowed and what isn't allowed on a given trail or is that also in process I mean, from my perspective, it, it, I don't know that there is such a list or and maybe I'm wrong, Dave, I've never we, seen it. We we could, I'm sure we could find a historic list. I guess I wanted to have the conversation and maybe this is a hold on this too, because it's more complicated, but, you know, historically P. Westover, he, he posted, you know, he ha had a list, had a map and basically said, all of these trails, you know, you're trying to split the pickle off these trails because they go through wetlands or these trails are wet at some avoid this section you know during april and may it's kind of absurd if you ask me um i think we need to just have have a larger conversation how how impactful are horses and mountain bikes on our trails do we do we want to allow them at all or do we not care and that's related to the list that you gave us once about um Policy issues, dogs, mountain bikes, motorized vehicles, hunting, they were all on this list that you may recognize, you know. So it's it's the the tougher questions that we'll have to get to before we can really finalize this entire document, but we'll hold that for now. Going on, um, watercraft. Hold on, I, hold, on. hold on, Bruce. Yep. I'm gonna suggest that we split horses and bikes for purposes of discussion. Because there are different, there are different issues involved. Sure, and there okay. might be different, there might be different answers. Yep. And oh, by okay. the way, I, I saw mountain bikes on Amethyst Brook yesterday. Are they not supposed to be there? I don't know. <laughs> um, well, that's not, this is a good example of. <laughs> there needs to be a way to know. <laughs> exactly. Well, and I think that as we talk about climate change. And and just, you know, I know that historically we've had lists and things of properties appropriate for it or not. You know, we may want to consult other sources like natural heritage and endangered species mapping to see where trails intersect with endangered species. And those might be areas where we want to, you know, uh, 
have limitations. Um, but I, I, I guess I'm just bringing this up because I think there are new sources of information that might not have been in existence back when Pete Westover made designations of what trails were open for these activities or not. And so that might be something to think about. Can I just interject what for food for thought? Um, I know we'll come back to it, but um, I have been places where our mountain bikes weren't allowed because they're single track trails and it was more of a pedestrian hiker safety issue. Um, like low visibility or it wasn't entirely about um, impacts to wetlands. So as you're out walking around and you're seeing or experiencing something like that, maybe just keep it in mind. Yeah, those well, are that, would be a, that would be a safety issue then. Yeah, I mean, it, it was like a, yeah. a very topographic single track place that was very attractive to mountain bikers for that reason, but it was very scary when you're on the trail, like with your kids and someone barreling down it on a bike, just, just, just thought, I mean. Yeah, these are all, these are all good. And this is all why I thought it was a more complex discussion. Yeah. I also think enforcement, we can post all we want. We can put it on the website all we want, but who's going to enforce, you know, horse rules or, or mountain bike rules. We also need to think that the Mount Holyoke range is a Mecca for, it's a Mecca for, for, uh, mountain bikes and we have many of the access trails from the Amherst side up to the to the range are owned by the town so anyway good good conversation to have yeah so let's break them in two and talk about okay. them separately there's sure like next issue watercraft so i i kept the changes we made the last time but if this says what it says now are you happy with it Motorized boats are prohibited, period. Kayaks, paddle boards, and canoes are permitted on Covers Pond, Owens Pond, Plum Brook Pond, Fort River, and other navigable waterways on conservation land. Mm -hmm. Who's, who in the public is going to know a navigable waterway from a floatable waterway? I don't think they do. That's a pretty... Uh, that's a term of art. It's a mm -hmm. it's a, actually a legal term, but uh, why navigable? So I mean, the, we if we just drop navigable and just say other waterways on conservation land, that would cover everything that was needed. Mm -hmm. Yep. I like it. Okay, we're taking navigable out. Dogs. I think that's tabled. Yeah, I'm sorry, in what way? Oh, it's a deeper discussion. Oh, right. This is a hold for, it even says and Michelle she, would like a more extensive discussion. <laughs> and she, she, she volunteered for it. Right. That's right. So we'll hold that for when we have deep dive discussions. Okay. Yeah. Then, so that covers the permitted, and the special uses and situations, permitted and encouraged uses. Then there's the prohibited items and the prohibited activities. Of course, there's some sort of prohibitions up above in the watercraft part. I may, I'll see whether it makes sense to um, repeat that. Then use of motorized vehicles, uh, e-bikes or motorized were cr was crossed out. Can you scroll up? So are we continuing yeah, down? It's three now. There we go. Well, let's talk about permaculture first. So Michelle had this comment about that. I just didn't know why permaculture is being specifically called out if it just meant like community gardens or something. I mean, that's like a specific type of agriculture. Um, so there was an, an, uh, an intentional planting of permaculture gardens, I know, at Amethyst Brook um, and also at, um, uh, gosh, why do I always draw a blank? The, um, the old Hitchcock Center site, um, Larch Hill. There were like, there was intention by certain members of the community to plant permaculture gardens and there were plantings put in there for that purpose. So I think the idea was, and also if we ever did 
additional permaculture in the future. I know there's a lot of um, uh, permaculture that's been previously um, encouraged on conservation land and public lands. And so wanted to make sure like if somebody was planting um, varieties of like berry bushes for people to pick while they're out on a hike that it's clear people could pick berry bushes if they were in a permaculture garden. So that's why they were called out. Okay. I don't know the definition of permaculture, but is it just sort of like public garden? Does that encompass it? I mean, if it's a few blueberry bushes, does that make it permaculture? I don't know. Well, um, it seems so, oddly specific, but I know what you mean. It's a public like forage garden or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me see the exact definition. Permaculture is an approach to land management and settlement design that adopts arrangements observed in flourishing natural ecosystems includes a set of design principles derived using whole system thinking. Yeah, I feel like that might be a reach if you're just planting blueberry bushes for foraging. I just think I that, agree with that. Yeah. Like I, I'd be forage. inclined to drop it, but I mean it, at some level it's so fine grained compared with the other things in this section. Yeah, I mean, I would defer to the board. Um, it's just like if it's ever a land use situation or if like in the future we do agricultural, uh, an agricultural lease or something and people wanted to install a permaculture garden with the purpose that people could use it. Um, it's just. From, a, from the standpoint of grammar, the fact that it's in a parenthetical, uh, it's offset by parentheses means it can be discarded mean from the document yeah it's somebody yeah. Put, I, put it in parentheses so from a grammar standpoint it can be excluded without loss well and, and to answer aaron's point i think if that ever came up it's if with a capital i and a capital f um if it ever came up then the 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 commission could address it then and just say we're going to make an exception with this particular lease or something like that. I, I just feel like it's too, too small for, and we're already want to try to reduce this. If you're going to make a tear sheet out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think that's fine. And I think it's covered in the, you know, or other purposes as authorized case by case by the commission. Right. Okay. Moving on. Um, uh, hold, 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 hold on, please. Um, plant destruction. Um, we are prohibiting the collection of fruits. Is that in here? I was going to ask the same thing because I think down below there's something about foraging berries, but it should it should be in this section if it's split. Because I remember. Yeah, so this is that means we would dis we would disallow somebody going out and harvesting blueberries for personal consumption, making pies and things like that, if we had a low brush blueberry area. Is that true? Right, right. so why? we're working, we're, we're we, we shouldn't do why, that. Why, yeah, we're, we're, we're managing these lands like a national park where you can do, you can't do anything unless there's permission to do it. Whereas opposed to a forest service piece of property, where you can do anything you want unless there's a sign that says you can't. There used and to be something in here saying that you could. Does it, Aaron, do you remember that? Did it get deleted or something? Well, we've gone through so many drafts, to be okay. honest, and so many iterations of comments. I, I mean, we, we went through comments from like eight different commissioners over the course of a year. So I don't really recall if it like how it, I, I know that there were comments from people saying we should allow it. And then there were comments from people, I think, saying, I don't know, maybe we shouldn't allow it because people, you know, sometimes take liberties when they're allowed to do things. Um, and I I don't really know, you know, I think it's a it's a good question. And I think for this committee to sort out. <laughs> I think well, people I, should I, be able to, sorry, Alex. Just, just from a personal standpoint, I want to be, I want to make it difficult to, for us to say somebody can't do something. To, to just say somebody might take advantage of it, to me, that's not good enough. And I, if if somebody wants to go out and pick blueberries, um, what harm would that do? I, I think there's probably enough for the wildlife. And uh, I just take that as an example. And the, the, the 
headline is plant destruction and picking fruits doesn't destroy the plant. So okay, just... so one one uh, possible way to handle it is to take the harvested word out and then change the header to be more reflective of what we're trying to say. Anyone object to taking the word harvest out? I'm, I'm pausing a little bit in my mind, just trying to think of, are there any situations where something, someone might basically over, over harvest? Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm just pausing in that for a minute. Um, I think sometimes like there's herbs that could be over harvested. Um, ramps is another example of things people go out and harvest and I mean, I've seen people like pick all of the um, pearly everlasting and then it never came back. In mushrooms. Mushrooms, yeah. yeah. Well, then the flip side is yeah. to say that they're, if, so what if there's blueberries? Um, they can't be harvested by this regulation, by this, this document. And if some, a few people harvest them, that's the way it goes. Yeah, you got to just allow it. fruit collection. I mean, well, blueberries, apples, uh, autumn yeah. olive, raspberries. Alex, it was well, interesting. It was interesting your comparison of a national forest to um, what to a uh, fish and wildlife a refuge or no, national, a national park. park. Yeah. yeah, quite interesting. Uh, that it, make, it makes a, me think about huge... everything we're doing. You know how we're, how we're restrictive managing... are we? We're very restrictive. Mm -hmm. And um, basically, all you can do is is walk and talk, and boat, <laughs> and boat. But mm -hmm. I, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's disallowed because somebody might take advantage of it, or or we might have a problem, or we can't have camping because we had problems when we allowed that, and homeless people set up shelters and things like that. So, um, but we infringe on human enjoyment. And there's there's lots of different human enjoyments to be had on conservation land. And um, I think of my cousin who likes to pick blueberries in the summertime and she makes beautiful, beautiful blueberry pies. I don't think she over harvests. She makes enough, you know, she picks enough to make her pies. Now, does that mean that we're going to have a ton of people out there picking blueberries? I doubt it. And, and if that becomes a problem, then the board will deal with it. But I, I, as we got into these tough issues, I want to be tough on saying no and have very good reasons if we do say no and not just do it because we're afraid. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Is, any, is anybody against blueberry and berry harvesting? I mean, I didn't hear that. No, I think what Alex was saying was that word harvested prohibits that from happening. Yeah. Well could we could we maybe state um just at after the to replace the, the statement in, in parentheses state the commission allows picking of berries collection of berries on conservation land or something like that just to make that's it clear true. that that's an exception foraging well, you, you could also put the word commercial um before harvest plants may not be cut commercially harvested um we're talking plants not the fruits i don't i don't i we're taking a lot of time on this one issue maybe we give Bruce, oh, okay. To think about I have it. a I have an idea on how to proceed. I'll put it in and show it to you the next time. Okay. Let's go to motorized vehicles. So again, I tried to do what you what we talked about last time. Does this work? Looks good to me. Mm 
Okay. And that uh, is, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, uh, I think emergent is the word emergency in there. The only exception is mobility devices or permitted for use of mobility issues who required who require handicap disability access or emergency vehicles. Mm -hmm. We ran into that issue on the Mount Holyoke range when we were permitting a project up there where I think Andre was talking about the use right. of emergency vehicles. So mm -hmm. I would I'll like to allow in. emergency vehicles. Yep, good catch. Okay, I got that. The last two, use of metal detectors. Michelle asked why that's in there and playing paintball. Um, Alex says, yeah, well, why is that in here? Or was Alex responding to my question? No, I think he was saying, likewise, why is painting plate paintball on this list? I think his comment is in response to mine and he's saying, yes, why? So if you think, yeah. Well, let's, let's, why I can answer, I can answer on metal detectors. If okay, please. So, yeah, metal detectors can be used to and are used and have been used on, on our conservation land to um, to find and take off site historic um, artifacts from, for instance, mill sites along the Cushman Brook and the Mill River. Um, if those are public resources, why do we want somebody, why do we want to allow people to use them and potentially take off important artifacts that belong to the to the residents of Amherst coins and buckle belts and uh, belt buckles and all sorts of things are mined at these sites that's that's why it okay that's why I was there it's pretty I mean it's a pretty it's standard really it's pretty standard on you know on on disallowing them on conservation land or public land for that matter. Okay, Alex and Michelle, are you okay with leaving it in? Yeah, and that's a good reason. I don't know if we wanna add the reason or just leave it at that. I'm just gonna put it up with the other things that are don't have reasons attached, smoking, feeding wildlife, et cetera. Paint, paint well, well, um, I don't know about paint, I've never, we, I, I've never en encountered anybody playing paintball, like organized paintball. I don't know if Michelle I've, or others you wanted to comment I've on. I've seen that? a setup. Um, it was a, an abutter setup, uh, not in Amherst, but in another town, where an abutter to piece of conservation land had a paintball course that then extended beyond their property onto conservation lands. So I, I have seen it before, but I didn't add that specifically. I don't think. Maybe that's a recreational activity that needs a permit. I don't think we should have playing paintball. It's very impactful and it leaves like very bright colored paint all over trees and people make like move stuff and break sticks and make forts. And it, you know, I would not want to be on a walk and ex walk through a paintball. Um, I've encountered them before actually down by off Northeast street. Um, it's not, it's not. Oh, a, in the rifle range? Um, is that what it's called? That long road that goes back to the brook there? Is it Adams Brook? Yeah. There was what, a big. I guess the question, and I'm, I'm, I'm channeling Alex here. Are we, is that, is that likely to happen? Um, Aaron, in your example, that was an, something that overflowed from private property do we need to list it or is this a situation that would simply, if it were to happen, we would go out and address it. The department would say, who's playing paintball out here? You can't play paintball out here. Or do we need to broadly just, you know, um, prohibit it? I yeah, guess I'm asking, thanks. you know? I vote for prohibiting it off the bat. It's mm -hmm. not a great thing to have done on public conservation land. I mean, it's terrible. It leaves like fluorescent paint all over the place. It's oh, yeah. I'm not denying it all, Michelle. Yeah. In fact, I was involved in cleaning up the paintball situation oh. over in the rifle range, which was UMass property. And it was it was very bad. I'm just saying 
I've actually never heard of it on conservation land, but it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Where is the rifle range? The old We're rifle range is off of Northeast Street. Um, it's um, and uh, UMass allowed uh, the, the UMass Paintball Club to set up out there, and before you know it, I think it cost them ten to twenty thousand dollars to clean it up. Um, the paintballers, very enthusiastic group, had brought all sorts of stuff there, including some doors that were made of asbestos. Anyway, it turned into a nightmare for you. I, I'm inclined to to leave it prohibited. If someone wants to complain about it someday, they can do that. But fine, works. Okay, I yield the floor back to Alex. I have my notes. I'll give you in a revised version of this next time. Whereas I, I think someone said put it that one into recreation. I think that's a good idea, right? Okay. Throw it in under recreation yeah. justice. Okay. Maybe there can be one on recreation land someday, but we'll yeah. see. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, before we leave paintball, just to be devil's advocate, um, I, I would favor disallowing it, but we do have pickleball. And the town got a grant and is spending lots of money to change the landscape on conservation land to, I think it's conservation land, maybe, no, maybe, maybe no, no, it's town land. No, recreation still land. The town, recreation. the town is, it's recreation land. Yeah. And the town is spending a lot of money to create pickleball courts, which, which are highly visible, cost a lot of money. And, um, so beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Um, and if UMass, <laughs> if they had a bad experience with pickleball, I'm perfectly willing to follow their example and disallow it. But, um, um, yeah, it got bigger than they imagined. That's what happened. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, moving on. Thank you, Bruce. You're welcome. I appreciate that. I know, uh, Going through there is tedious. No, uh, it's just, just the process where we have to do this to get to a place where we have something we can show other people. Yeah. I'm, so, Aaron, can, can we come back to our mission now? We're done with that. Just bring uh, the memo up that describes our our charter and the deliverables. And this came up in a conversation between Michelle and Aaron on Are We On Track? And I appreciated uh, Aaron sending this out. Um, I have said several times one of our purposes, I think is number four or number, number, yeah, number four, to revise and update the document we were handed and, hand, and give it back to the broader commission for their approval. And uh, it may be number four, uh, so I don't think these are any in any priority order, but I do think number four is high on our list to get through the document that we were handed and uh, bring it back to the commission for their uh, their consideration and hopefully approval. Um, that's why we started going through the document heading by heading and making assignments where somebody would look at it and come back like Bruce has, like I have, like Michelle has. So we've been pecking away at that. I would like to have a conversation at some point, doesn't have to be today, about that process. And particularly, um, when do we go back to the commission? Do we do it in chunks? Do we wait till the whole document is done? We've never clarified that amongst ourselves. Also, uh, a discussion about updating the document. Things have gotten lost and file names. Uh, we could use a different file name section. So on a future meeting, I would like to have a, an agenda item where we actually talk about number four and how we see us going forward from a process standpoint. Uh, period. Bruce. Um, and, and if I am, I believe that three and eight are also part of four. At least they are so far. Whether they should be split out or not, I don't know. But they, at the moment, they're sitting there is, as part of number four. 
Yeah, I mean, I think multiple elements of the deliverables are sort of entwined in the um, uh, the overall land management document. Um, I, I think sort of the intention, the way that I drafted this was for the committee to to revise applicable sections of the land management policy. Um, but, you know, I think the, I think the commission has to, to some degree, the whole document has to make sense. And I think, you know, everything that we've done so far has made sense and it's been logical. So I think, you know, that's, that's great. And we should just keep going. Um, I think, you know, we've been doing it sort of a peach, piecemeal approach for all of them. And I think, you know, however makes the most sense for this, to, for us to organically go through it, it doesn't have to be start with one and end with eight. Um, but... I would like to keep a record of what sections we have gone through and settled on amongst ourselves. Um, and I don't, I, I'm happy to create that list. Aaron wants to do it fine, but I'm happy to do it so that we have a written record of what we've covered and what we yet to get done. And, you know, maybe just a simple, take me a copy of the table of contents and uh, highlighting things we've gone through and settled on in a different color, something simple. Just, uh, I, as Bruce pointed out, I started putting dates at the, at, in the header on when things were revised as a way to keep track. Um, but every time the commission actually meets, uh, Michelle gives an update on what we're doing. <clears throat> and um, it's always pretty obtuse. And I, I think we should pretty soon come up with some idea of how we're going to get back to them in pieces or in whole to give them an idea of what our time frame is. Bruce? So I, I would be curious from Aaron and Dave for numbers one through eight, are there any of them that are not going to end up in this document that are totally separate? The one that comes to mind is forest future forest practices because of the notion of trying to get a forestry bylaw. But for the rest, is any of this not in the land use policy document? Yeah, so I think that there there is a forestry section that um, I believe Alex worked on, and I was going to say that from my oh, perspective okay. is kind of the one that is closest to complete um, of all of the sections from my just thinking about where we're at with all the sections. I think almost all of them are in some level of draft, except for that one. I think we were almost all in agreement with the revisions okay. that dated. Um, Fair but, enough. As far as the forestry bylaw that you mentioned, Bruce, I think that the forestry bylaw is more a for a forestry bylaw is a townwide bylaw similar to a wetland bylaw that covers any forestry practices in the town. So it wouldn't be specific to the um, overall land conservation land management policy because okay, it, would, it would extend beyond conservation land. Fair enough. Um... Well, then it seems like all of these are part of the overall land policy document. Yeah. Okay. So, Aaron, we have five minutes left in this meeting. Could we put on the next agenda uh, a continuation of our discussion about deliverables, including number four, and particularly number four, so that we can get our head around uh, the kinds of things that I just talked about and um, anything else that others uh, I'd like to put beavers on there for next time. And I'd like to spend the next remaining time, which is about four minutes on field trips. I think all we have dates. All we need is where we're going and maybe that's a, an email or something. Um, so I did send out a save the date um, invitation for the, the two dates, and I think it's just coming up with recommended site visits for us to attend on those specific dates. I definitely have some sites in mind, but I thought it might be good for Dave and I to touch base, um, and then I could send out just our sort of meeting location and hoped sites to visit during that date. Yeah. 
we were talking about maybe this was weeks ago, Aaron, we haven't touched base on this in a while. We were talking about maybe starting with um, agricultural sites. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Going with that? Okay. Yeah. And my thinking was to start in North Amherst and maybe we could do like Hodick, Zala, Catherine Cole, um, and possibly like um, Haskins Meadow. Um, yeah. And then any other North Amherst that might make sense. So we only have an hour. Right. As I believe, I, you know, it's um, set up for an hour. Mm -hmm. And I doubt we can visit very many sites in an hour. Logistics will eat us up. Yeah. yeah. So, and I think the other part of it is like when we visit the sites, like for example, Zala, you can just um, park in the parking lot and see the field right in front of you. So, it, will we want to get out of the car and walk the entire site? Um, same with Haskins Meadow, you can sort of drive by and see it. Um, so, it's really kind okay. of at the commission's okay. will. Well, let's see if you like. and I can come up with that, Aaron, because we know all the sites really well and we know parking. You know, weather will will dictate, you know, like there's parking at Podic, Catherine Cole, but there's no parking at um, Askins Meadow. So why don't you and I, to to Alex's point, we only have an hour. We can probably, with 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 um, getting between sites, probably only visit two in an hour. That's my guess. So I would ask, I would ask Dave uh, and Aaron in the time remaining that while you think about sites, Think about the issue you want to talk about at each site and whether snow on the ground will make it difficult for us to see it or understand it. Yeah. Um, and, we, and if it's irrigation, we can understand that. But if there's something that snow will hide, then please, you know, find a site where the weather, uh, the, the conditions on the ground won't prohibit us from understanding what the issues are. We could do a nice little map of each site. Michelle, do you have a question? I was just wondering for something like Haskins Meadow, like I don't, if there's no parking, how would the group kind of get their, their feet on the ground and talk about it? And I was just wondering if if for that site, maybe other sites, if there's sort of like a, you know, summary of issues and things about it that you would provide and we could visit it on our own time if, if there's like a selection of sites like that. Yeah, um, maybe, yeah, Aaron and I, that's a great idea. Maybe Aaron and I can go through and see logistically which ones make sense in February, March, and which ones don't. And if there are ones we can't visit, we could provide a map and some things for you all to think about and visit on your own. And maybe you need snowshoes to walk around or whatever, weather, weather. Let's see what the weather looks like. I need to go to another meeting. Sorry. Yep. Bye. Thank you. Uh, no, Aaron, are there any members of the public standing by? No. Nope. Okay, so it is one o'clock, and this meeting ends at one o'clock. So I do I hear a motion to, to close the meeting. I move to adjourn. I second. <laughs> Who's is left? So we're going to end this meeting at one o'clock PM, which is the time right now. Um, so adjourned. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Enjoy the snow. <laughs>